Okay, we're going to go through the build process of one of my rubber band machine guns. I just did one. I'm going to start the second one here. Walk you guys through the entire set. Uh, I actually still have just a little bit more to go on the line to finish. So we'll set that aside. So that I'm getting the key to the next one. Get my glue bottle ready here. And I'll follow dry glue. I will have to turn on my air pump, which will get real noisy when I turn it on. So I'll turn that on in just a minute here. Because that's used extensively. And clean up my area a little bit. I have um, to make some shins as well. So I'll take you here and work with most of it here. And when I'm working somewhere else, I'll move the camera with me. Let me get a little on part. The butt. Other part of the butt, not cut all the way yet. I thought I had that cut all the way. Um, that's that cut. Yeah, this set's ready to go. I need to do that set over there. I'll grab it. Yeah, this set's ready to go. Those are all the rubber band tooth teeth holders. The rolling pin. Still need to put on the other one. I didn't do that yet. Body. That's where we start. And then we go into the side. There's the There's the butt piece that I was looking for. So good last. So what we do is we take the main body, which has just been cut out on the CNC. Uh, you may or may not have seen that in a video previously. I'll show it at some point. And after we cut it on the CNC, we come along with a router and we do an edge along any outside edges. So this is, uh, let's see if I can show a close up of that real quick on just one little piece here. Yeah, so it's flat on the one side here, and then kind of round it over on the other side. Anything that sticks out where your hands are going to rub up against it is rounded over. So, for example, the butt of the gun is all rounded over, but this piece actually goes against the other part of the butt. So these two pieces will glue together and nail together. This side's rounded, this side's rounded, but the two inside pieces are not rounded. So that's done on all parts of the main body where there's nothing else attached to it, it gets rounded over. So the end has a cut, so no rounding. It kind of fits in like that when it's all ready to go. And the sides, goodbye piece, the sides get all the way rounded around as well. Um, I think they get all the way rounded, except right on the edge right here, where the gun has to attach to the ears because you don't want it rounded on the front side, just all the way down the edges to it. So the first thing we will do is this piece here. This has the slot for the wires to travel up from the motor, to uh, from the trigger to the motor. This is the bottom of it when you're building it. And this is the top because it has a hole, not a, it has a slot and a hole. That hole allows the wires to come back out the side here and into the box where the motor and the batteries fit. So the trigger has a path through here 
and the main part of the gun up into the other part. And I, I, I do it on both sides, so it's just a little bit of in there. And those three pieces will end up going together as such. I'll try to insert some pictures as I go of a finished gun and point out the different areas of the gun, if I remember. All right, so let's, um, I said I need to turn on the air, so I'm going to do that right now. I'll be right back. Just adding in a bit of a sound bite here, the air compressor puts off a lot of noise, so I took this section of sound out, and I'm just adding in a little voiceover. It's much better when the air compressor is not running, so I need a piece, two pieces of this, a half inch thick, which is how thick my wood is. Keep the goggles on. Easy to cut aluminum tube. And these can be a little on the long side, but they cannot be on the short side. Because I'm going to sand them off in a second anyway, so. Super easy to cut. Didn't even need that new one yet. Save that for the next gun. That's probably all I'm going to get out of that one. I don't know what these are. They're just aluminum tubes with some kind of funnel on top. I don't know what it is. But nonetheless, they work. And I just needed a, some type of metal tube. So I had something I'm laying around. So we're going to move back over. up here. I got my air hose on the ground down here. I'm trying to avoid getting wrapped around it and then pulling the camera over. Alright, so I said I was going to sand these and I'm going to because they will get caught on the wood if I don't. Simple sand, nothing major. Knocking the burrs off the outside. You know, you can be burred and knock the burrs off the inside. This one may be a little short. i got to double check this one. This is the first one I cut, and I think I may have made it short, but we'll double check if it is up to the Deeper the inside so it's not getting caught as it's shooting off the rubber bands. This is what it spins on. And those go inside. Ooh, that's close, but yeah, that's a little small. Okay, so fail on that one. So, no. that one works, but that one, eh, possibility. I'll try it. If it does, it's a possibility. I need four washers. Washer cup. One, two, three. Just gotta find the ones that the screw head won't go through. Two screws on this project. Two drywall, one and a quarter inch screws. Four that size washer. This will end up going through like that washer on both sides and this is how I can test it. If I pinch it and it still spins with the washer in there, we're good. We're golden. There were two screws. What did you do with the other one? Let's see if this one's long enough. The three D printer just finished and as I was printing I realized like within the last few minutes that the part's not even right. That one's actually a little big, but I said bigger wasn't a big issue, except it's curved. I have to sand the one side down a little bit. That's right, right there. 
not a straight cut at all. But it's aluminum, so it takes a second just to sand it back out. Cut it all out here. Yeah, a little loose. That one's a little loose. Yeah, so that'll be the front one. And that'll be the back one. Why? Because the back one needs a little more tension. Okay. Now, that is the motor holder. So we won't use that until much later. Um, we have air, so we can shoot. We use everything else gets attached with nail gun. Told you that nail gun was going to wrap around my uh, camera. Good catch. Okay, let's take that and set that all back up. And this time let's get the net hose, the hose out of the camera so that we can actually record without the whole thing tipping over again. That could have been bad. I was just getting ready to take a drink. Don't drink water, just drink water. Okay, so the worst part of the project, and I'm going to speed through this part real quick because it's boring and it's a pain taking the glasses off because there is no danger in getting hit by anything right now. I'm literally just trying to figure out which motor I'm going to use. I'll save that one for later. It gave me a little bit of trouble when I took it apart. This one's nice and ready to go. It's got, I think it's already cut, cut out the, the nut that goes in here. The nut that goes in here is a reverse thread, and it's slightly under a quarter inch. Oh yeah, that one's already ready to go. So you take that out, and then you run a tap down where you took that out, a quarter inch, you can put it back to a standard thread. So, and then you get, you know, your trigger, the part that would go to your battery for um, charging the battery and running the battery off of, and then your motor. So we're gonna disconnect the motor, We'll come back to the motor much later. That's the last thing we do. And what we have here is some kind of temperature sensor that doesn't allow the thing to overheat. We're going to leave that. We don't need to worry about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to splice these wires because we need to get from down here all the way up inside the box with that and with these. These are what's going to run to the battery. One of us will light in this. Just needs to be down in the bottom. This is a MOSFET. Sorry, once my heater turns on, it gets a little noise down here, so I will try to speak a little louder now that my heater's on. This is a MOSFET, and it runs on this big, humongous piece of aluminum to cool the extra heat off of the trigger for some reason. Now, that's what the extra giant groove is down here in the bottom. The place for the MOSFET just to sit. However, I think this one's going to be too big. So I'm going to need to knock off part of that so it can fit. Um, yeah, way too big. So we'll knock off part of that. But first, I want to go ahead and do the soldering to this because I need to run all these wires much longer up into the top. So I got some old, uh, uh, what is this? This is just trailer wire for hooking up a trailer hitch. Um, so we're going to use this because it's what I have. And I don't have any red or black wire. It would be nice if I did, but I don't. So I'm going to use this. Uh, four pieces, about that big. Uh, we'll save for the next one. Uh, we'll cut off all that stuff there because it looks like it's already been touched. Mangled. There we go. There is brown and white. It's going to go to red and black. I almost put it in my teeth to cut it apart there, but I get in trouble for that every time I do it. So there's one. Yes. 
strip off the uh, wire. I am no electrician. So please don't do as I do. Don't worry about dying because everything is low, low, low voltage here and DC. Maybe don't put it in your mouth. Already? I really hate these things because you are getting up on it, you end up blocking it every time. So you got to get rid of that thing. Maybe I just need to buy a better pair. I don't know. Just hate the way they lock when you're trying to use them. Rather than just be open all the time, lying around. I guess I could just break it off. Okay. What? Oh, wait. Not done cutting wires yet. Gotta cut these. Yeah, I really don't know what that thing is there. I'm wondering if I should even keep it. Some kind of voltage regulator or something? <laughs> Probably should keep it. Probably should keep it, but this. Is just to crimp two wires together. I guess I could just cut right through that. Replace that with the other wire. Right? Alright. Again, not an electrician. Yeah, that came right off. So, oh, that's weird. Black to red. Black to black. But we'll never figure that out at the top. We'll be confused. But we'll figure it out. So we're going to go ahead and take our chance and cut this right in half. And that's where we're going to try and solder those two wires in to extend this all the way up. This ought to be fine. Well, that was already cut. Look at that. switch red and black, and the battery red and black. That will be interesting when we get a top and we can't see it after we glue it all together. Which is how I did it on the last one, so. Won't be anything there. Flux everything. Why do we flux? I don't even know why we flux. I know we flux. I watched enough YouTube videos to know that flux is important. I don't know why. Sound like a bad word, I guess. I better stop saying that. All right, and then uh, we got two more cut here. Forget about these two. And I don't leave a lot of room there. Okay, so connectors are way too big. So cut them off as much as you can get out of them. Goodbye, bad piece. And then uh, ship what little is left here. Don't make any mistakes. on me again. While I was fluxing this, I could have been heating up my iron. You know those um, things that you dip your iron in 
to clean it up. I need one of those because this is the stupidest thing ever. All right, so everything's ready to be soldered. This needs to be centered. Why don't we cut this while we're waiting for that to heat up? Going back over to the cutting table. Cutting vice, cutting table, I don't know. This thing is just not like going to be over here. Too far from the uh, power cord. Any kind of thing. Um, less to cut off on this side. More to cut off on this side. Let's cut the less off, I guess. I don't know. Glasses down. Cut. <laughs> All the motors. Motor, 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 motor. Goodwill's been good to me. Many more R band guns. Unless I come up with something else to make. Oh, yeah, that'll fit now. Yeah, it just sticks above a little bit. That's hot still. That will fit inside of. There. All right. Get glasses off while I figure out what I'm doing here. Okay. We need to solder all these four wires, all these four wires, and this wire for some reason. And this wire. Oh, that's right. Cause these got the little motor attachments, so we'll solder them after we put this through the box. Cause I won't be able to fit all that through the hole. Okay, let's get this out of the way so I don't drip any solder on it. Dust and solder, maybe not a good thing, I don't know. Oh, I have my solder. Hold on. Really? Really? Oh, okay, here we go. I use the very last of the last solder, so we're trying a new one here. I don't know what brand it is. I don't know anything about it. This side. Everstar. Yeah, I do know what brand it is. Again, not an electrician. Oh my gosh, there's nothing in that thing. That is the littlest thing of solder ever. 0.28 ounces or 8 grams. Oh my gosh. I think I got ripped on that one. This is so thin. Luckily, we're just doing a few wires here. Oh my gosh, this will melt fast. I wonder if I have a piece of that old solid rock in there. Because this is going to be great stuff. Well, that's not going to 
just about half as thick. Interesting. That'll be gone in no time. That's all I have left in the last one. The top of there. Clean up the tip. Yeah, fancy tip cleaner, right? Don't judge. I got some new lighting. That's a good thing. No, I haven't gotten a new mic yet. Really shouldn't solder under your face. Again, now I'm electric. I'm just tinning all the wires real quick here. Making soldering a lot easier in the end. Drip. It definitely won't last long to keep dripping it, right? Yeah, we'll just reuse it. This stuff really is going to go fast. Yeah, that's kind of them together. This thing on. This is the point where you're supposed to remind me to clean the pit. Red and black to yellow and green. The plan? Okay. It doesn't matter because those are yellow and black too. I mean, it does matter. It's just, oh, 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 oh. Don't go anywhere. Did you hear my fan on my pretty friend going up and down and up and down? And you're saying to yourself, what has he done? Where has he gone? What is he doing? What is he looking for? Oh, I love my shrink wrap. I, I don't love my shrink wrap. Junky shrink wrap. 
probably the cheapest shrink rack in the world because, to be honest, I always feel like it's the wrong size. This will go over this when I solder them together. It will never, ever, ever get over the solder joint. Probably because I don't know how to solder. Oh, that's that. Why didn't you tell me I was getting burned? Holy crap. I just burnt my St. Louis Rams shirt. Jeez Louise. Don't worry. They're gone. Forever. Okay. Yellow to red, green to black. Fair enough. I'm just going to create another little sound bite here. The um, compressor came back on and it got real loud. I'm just working on the electronics here, soldering all of the parts together. So this is a boring part for me. I don't like doing the electronics. Uh, soldering is not my favorite thing. I'm not good at it. Practice makes perfect though. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and let this run through at a little bit higher speed. Try to shorten this video up just a bit since it's probably going to be an hour long video when it's all done. Okay, here's what we have. This is the switch. This is the forward reverse. I don't use the forward reverse. It's in forward. Click and forward because you are right handed with a drill. Forward. Reverse. Thumb. Forward. Finger. Index. Right handed. Push it in. Index. Forward. Now we take that fantastic piece and we get rid of it. We don't ever go in reverse. We don't want it accidentally flip into reverse on us. So we're good. Unless somebody accidentally flips it to reverse. Next up, wire going. Okay, we're actually going to turn this off before we do burn ourselves once more. We're going to move it further away. We're going to plug this one in. Hot glue gun. There's no screws to hold this thing in. But once you get it in place, you've got to hot melt it in. But it's not going to fit. It never does. Literally, it hasn't yet. Um, you get it. Okay, remember when I said what happens is these break out? Well, this one just broke out. Oh, these look like they're just a push in. Take some glasses off. Yep, got lucky. I push them up the side like that. All wires heading north. Oh, out of the way. Going to try and get this in here and not going to fit. Never does. Need to change pattern. But we want the trigger coming out inside here. That's the most important part. The trigger inside this box is where the trigger should be. So, we have to cut little notch right here and place the trigger back on a lot of a notch back here. And we're going to draw that all out on the wood. We need to get rid of all of that. And that will give our trigger a place to stick. But we also need to do it on the other side because it's going to sandwich it. So, we took out, well, maybe, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of it. There, and we have that much of that one, that much of that one. Generally, I go ahead and nail these two together. That way I'm taking them out at the same time. So we're going to do that really quick. So record. So, kind of line these all up. Get the parts 
lined up. Now here's the most important part when I'm lining up is this space right here. Because this has to ride on all three of this, the middle, and the other side, even, so it doesn't wobble around. So I make sure that's smooth. Then I kind of line this up. Then I check and see if I'm off too far down here. If I'm okay here and not at the bottom, I can always stand at the bottom. That looks good. So that all fits. But I didn't put any glue in there. And I don't know what size nails I have in here. I have this size. I have more of those. I have more of those. I have more of those right here. It takes about 10 nails or so. No. Those are those itty bitty ones. I have more of this stuff. Eighteen gauge, one inch. Eighteen gauge, five eighths inch. So we use a lot of different sizes. I got another size in there used too. And lock. I know I just lined it all up, right? So let's put glue on this side. Oops, I just glued in my uh, trough for my wire. I really don't want to glue in there because the wire gets moved freely. So let that out. So we get hooked to the motor, please. Okay, lovely. Now, glue spreading stick. Blue spreading stick. I've really lost my helmet. There it is. Tongue depressor. Put it on the camera. This is kind of twofold. The glue holds somewhat, the nails hold somewhat. In the end, if it comes apart, just re nail it, I guess. Honestly, I don't know if I'd ever know, because I've been giving them all away, so they had to call me and say, hey, it's kind of hard. Okay, so, some glue in some different places. All right. Twist it. we don't have the one with the hole in it, because that goes on last. Not last, but after. And cat. Don't knock the camera over. Fun part. Oh, this slide. Okay. Make sure we're good. Pinch something. Don't know if you heard me, but 
but I used the wrong size nail. I should have used the 5 8 So I had to go and clip them all off with my side cutter. Probably not good for me. Now, now we can go cut it. But I'm going to get all the glue out of here. So we don't want all that. One of my drills. Alright, moving back to the cutting station. I call it a cutting station, but it's really just a couple. A drill and a mic, right? That's all there. Why the fancy piece of paper? Well, I will show you. They don't have the paper, and this is rubbing around. This has got a metal cutting on it a lot. And it gets all over the side and masses it up. That's why though. Paper. Hey, look at that difference there. It's way off. Way off. Something went sideways there. Okay. Here and here. Okay. Nothing's ever easy. Okay. Here and here. This is a router bit that's burnt up and not very good. That's why I'm using it, because it's hard to use. Because I'm going to use it. Huh? Oh, yeah, we're going to hit the top and bottom all at the same time. This is perfect. This thing tries to pull the opposite direction, whatever way you want to go. Since you're on hit the camera, don't laugh. Oh yeah, that's a wood putty job for sure. Chipped out the whole trigger mechanism there just about almost broke it off. Alright. Hey, what's this? We shut this. Oh, I don't know why I'm moving this back over here because, as mentioned, we need to do the other one. Hopefully this goes a little smoother. Maybe I'll try not to worry so much about You guys watching and more about me after cutting. Don't cross your fingers. easier. Maybe because I wasn't trying to do two layers at once. All 
turned up. Let's go back over there. Still recording? Sure you are. Hmm. piece goes in the bottom. Nice fit. This piece and all the extra wiring will be just bunched up in there. Oh, well, maybe not. It's a lot of extra wiring. Okay. So let's go ahead and space down the bottom down here. Find that thing. Turn it down in there. Maybe. Yeah, that fits. Sure it does. You stopped recording. I don't know when you stopped recording, but you stopped recording. I'm still messing with the wire. Don't worry about it. You didn't miss anything. And the switch. I think I got another CD. I think. I'm going to put a clamp on here so that this part is important. Then you keep moving around. Now, let's line everything else up a little bit. Glue on it. Thank you. This is still stuck. Oh, oh. I think I see the problem. Four pieces of wood are here, and then you cut all the way through. There we go. That should do the trick. Nails in, we're good to go. Get ready for a nail gun, guys. I had to shut off the sound again and do another voice over here. The actual compressor kicked on again, and I'm just removing all the clamps and nail gunning the rest of this together. And then compressor runs for a little while here. The placement of the nails is not that important until you get around the wires and the trigger. You don't want to shoot a nail through your wires, and you need to be a little careful around the trigger handle. The wood only actually is fully encompassed around the edges of the handle because we had the MOSFET sitting in the bottom and all the wires for the trigger running down to that section. So you can only shoot the nails around the outer edge of the handle. Okay, so I actually we'll get to that in just a second. Let's all do it squared out wrong. If any, because that would go on the old stuff. The bottom's just not lined up at all. Not the glue on this, that's just horrible. Okay. Well, I had this plugged in already, but I did. So then I come in here, and I line this thing up a little bit, and then I square a little glue in here. Why are you saying? I don't know. Let it dry. Let it dry and then peel it off.
Then, sorry, you can't see this. And hang it from the table for a minute to let it dry. Plus, and another glue stick. I ran that glue stick. Monster glue stick. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. This is why you let them dry. Because otherwise, they just turn you away. I think that's all I'm going to use. I'm just going to kind of drop them out. So, they're going to plug them up. Everything's on the plug. Everything's on the plug. Glue. All right, we got to solder these two back on, put the motor attachment. So let's do that before we go any further. Get that glue starting to dry. Oh yeah. So if you let it dry, you just peel it back off. Instead of when you rub it and it's not drying, it just smears everywhere and it's a mess. And I tend to rub it because I'm impatient. Yeah, we're gonna need a little more hot glue in there, but ooh, damn. All right, sorry about the screen, uh, video size, my camera, Activion, the camera I think is still working, but the battery has completely went kaput on me, so that's why we're having problems with video stopping and starting. It's a, uh, one of these little square batteries, and... I was charging it and running it the whole time when I was recording the video and I took it out and it was so hot it about burnt my finger. So I think the battery's dead. I'm hoping only the battery's dead. I ordered some, it won't even take a charge now. So I ordered some new batteries and until we get the new batteries for the cheesy little camera that I have, or a new camera, I'm trying to decide about that too because this thing's so small and I don't like it. I want something bigger. Until then, we're going back to the cool picks. Nikon cool picks, which doesn't do large shots. <coughs> and I kept working. <coughs> Sorry. I kept working because I wanted to get finished, so I am a little ahead of where I was. But luckily, I still have one more to build. And I think the last thing we did in the last video was put the frame together. So I need to show you how the how the box goes together, and I need to show you how the tumbler goes together and some of the accent pieces as well. So when I build that one, I'm going to wait for the other camera to come in hopefully, or the other battery to come in, which should only be a couple days, and then we'll get back to it. But I wanted to just kind of touch base with why I switched from this one to the next one. That being said, this is actually another one I think entirely the one we were working on. I think the one we were working on was that one. Or that one. I don't know. But now I have those four, four done and that being the fifth one up there. So I only have one more to go in my current build setup. And big part of the difference is this was, um, uh, what do they call that, ACB plywood or something like that. It's a, it's a cheaper plywood. It's used for flooring. So it's not quite as good. And where that comes into play is here. Um, these don't, the in the gears are the teeth. These are the teeth, I guess I'm calling them, and these are the gears. But in the teeth, they just don't <coughs> hold up as well. Uh, and there's a real good example right there. It just doesn't hold up as well with the cheesier plywood. 
so that's why I switched to using this plywood here, which is a I, I don't know the difference in the names of the plywood. This is a better plywood. It's finished on both sides of the plywood. Do I have any of it still laying around? I do. I haven't attached these pieces yet. So, yeah, you can't really see with this camera. I apologize. But both sides are nicely finished. It is five layers thick versus, versus trying to change the same piece with this one here versus three layers thick. Is that three? Yeah, one, two, three layers thick. So that's why I switched to plywood. And this camera is horrible. I'm sorry. In grain? Can't really tell either because this one's never been sanded. So. In grain. Maybe there. So, yeah, that's why I switched to this newer uh, wood. Better wood. Not. But I still have this one to finish. I have it all cut, so I'm going to go ahead and build it. <clears throat> and I have the motors for it. So when I'm building this one, it won't look as nice. But I figure what I'm going to do with these older... Uh, I keep saying older wood. It's not really older wood. It's just um, a different grain of wood. And you can kind of see it here. The back two are the standard flooring plywood. And the front two are your higher grade, two-sided finished, five-layer plywood. Uh... A big example of this would be, where's it at? Right there. There's a break in the wood because it fell apart a little bit. So that's actually the only one that's running right now is that one right there. This has the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, rolling pin on there that guides the string through. So that is literally the only one I have that's working currently. And it doesn't work great because I have some adjustments to make. But the rest of them will get there. I just need to get all the rolling pins installed. And this is the part that holds the rolling pin in. And the motors. I need to get all the motors installed. And as I mentioned, that is the hardest part of this job, is the electronics and the motors. These motors are not in. That one's obviously working, as I mentioned. And that motor is in. Nope, it's not in. It's not in. I'm sorry. It's just sitting in the case there, not in. And then uh, figuring out the batteries is another part that's kind of complicated. Uh, it's not that complicated, but uh, every one of these hand drills comes with a different size voltage. Uh, this one is, and I write it on them, 6 volts. This one is, good thing I smudged that off there, and now I'll never know what that is. Uh, that's crazy. I didn't write it down very well, so it'll be a try it and see. Man, I think it's 18 volts, but I don't know. Yeah, I usually write it on there better than that. Uh, I'm not getting... Uh, there we go. 12 volts on that one. 12 volts on that one. So, this one I tried leaving in the case. 7.2 volts, but I thought it would fit just right like that, but no chance. It's just, just a little too tight. So, taking it back out of the case, 7.2 volts. But you can see everyone has a different voltage, and I don't know how that all affects the actual shooting of the gun. So, I do know that the one that is working, right there, is a 12 volt. So those 6 and 7 volt ones may not have enough torque behind them or something. We'll see. But that is where we are right now. And until I get the new battery in, this is what I'm going to post on this video. And we'll get back to you as soon as the batteries come in. In part two. Okay, I'm just adding in some videos for you to see the process. Here we are running the CNC machine, cutting all the pieces out. Um, this is on the old sheeting plywood, one of the first ones I cut out. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the design is slightly different than the final design. Uh, next up, I have a picture of the original cutout where you can see that the actual side pieces were just small little attachments and they were not the full length of the gun. That was really wobbly.
So I had to come back and redo those and extend them all the way out as you see in the second slide. And here in the end, you just do the gun currently with state. Uh, most of them are in this state where they don't have the motor yet. 